This is part zero of a, a series of videos that show the analysis of a DC motor. And the reason for this video is to make sure that it makes sense uh, why we're doing all the different things we're doing, to just try to give you uh, a feeling for uh, where, where we head and why we head there. So, um, the I, well, so I guess I'll just tell you what's in the different parts of the video. Parts uh, 1 and 2, so I'll make actually a nice table. Okay, parts 1 and 2, the topic is finding the transfer function. So you're going to find the transfer function of this DC motor. And you'll recall that the transfer function is obtained by taking the Laplace transform of the output and dividing it by the Laplace transform of the input with uh, zero initial conditions. So that's uh, why in parts one and two you'll see that um, we set the initial conditions to zero and then we figure out how to get uh, the transfer function. Okay. Part three is finding the impulse response from the transfer function. So basically, uh, the impulse response is the inverse Laplace transform of the transfer function. So in part three, we're going to take the inverse Laplace transform of the transfer function and get the impulse response. Parts 4, 5, and 6 are going to be finding the response to non-zero initial conditions. Okay, so the idea here is unlike uh, parts 1 through 3, where we've assumed that they, we have zero initial conditions, in parts 4, 5, and 6, we're going to assume that we have non-zero initial conditions. And in fact, the assumption will be that the motor is spinning. And we'll find out uh, how the motor responds to these non-zero initial conditions. Uh, we'll actually assume that the input voltage is zero while it's doing this. So we're going to respond to non-zero initial conditions with a zero input voltage. Okay, and finally, in part seven, we're going to find how the motor responds to a unit step function that has a magnitude of 10 volts. So this is basically how the motor would respond if you turned it on. Uh, it's Everything's at rest, so the initial conditions will be zero. So zero initial conditions. And then you turn it on you know, in the sense that you add, uh, uh, put 10 volts across it and see how it, how it uh, spins up. So that's basically the idea of the flow of logic of these videos. Um, again, uh, just to reiterate, uh, first is the transfer function, then the impulse response, then the response to uh, non-zero initial conditions with a zero input voltage, and finally the response to an input with zero initial conditions. So, uh, I hope you enjoy the video sequence.